Welcome back to the shop here at Basin Motorsports. I'm Kanan. Today we are going to go over what I'm doing in the engine bay. So if you remember in the past couple winters over the projects, I have bought some covers for the engine bay and then I made three different covers out of carbon fiber, which was the coil covers and the throttle body. They're missing and here's why. Unfortunately, the vinyl on the panels that I bought really has not held up very well. And it's not the flat surfaces, it's the wrapped edges. One thing I'm having is a lot of delamination around the edges where the adhesive just isn't holding up to the heat in the engine bay. The flat surfaces is just fine, but like here you can see that all of this is starting to peel away. And I kind of worried about that when I put it on because adhesive only holds to a certain temperature. The Corvettes can run upwards of 230 degrees Fahrenheit and just like that, even carbon fiber, thin carbon fiber, isn't going to hold its shape. This should be curved and it's pretty much straight. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and replace all the vinyl that's on these covers except for the two coil covers which have lost their shape. I need to remake those later on using four layers of carbon fiber versus two and we'll go ahead and paint them. So I've partnered with ERA Paints. The ERA stands for Easy Repair Automotive. They're out of Tigard, Oregon, and they have supplied me with, hopefully, a pretty close color-matched blue paint similar to the flames on the Corvette, which is similar also as the vinyl. Now, that is the base I gave them to try to color match, so we're going to see how close it's going to be. What I'm going to use for them is I have a prep kit here that they supply, which is has all the good stuff in it. Nice gun trigger, some degreaser, tape, rags, anything else. I've got a primer to go on. I've got a base color, which is obviously the blue, and then a 2K high gloss clear coat. And the goal is to try and match everything there painted versus the vinyl. Now these covers are three different materials. Obviously the carbon fiber is even a fourth, if you could say that. Your battery cover I have is ABS plastic. The small cover here is just a fiberglass with a gel coat. And then this one is also fiberglass with a gel coat, but I can tell you it's a thinner fiberglass than this. Now all of these need to have the vinyl removed, which is just gonna be a heat gun to take it off, peel it off, and then all of these need to be re-scuffed to a 600 grit sandpaper. If you remember back in the video, of prepping these, I sanded them to 1500 grit. That is not enough surface texture or not enough grip for the base coat or the uh, primer to adhere properly. So we're going to take all the vinyl off all these, sand them to 600 grit before we start our primer. All right, so the next step in our process in getting everything painted is the prep work. So now I have removed the vinyl. The three black pieces there, I can tell you, did have a lot of adhesive on it. The surface prep, while it was smooth uh, for at least the vinyl, was not very good, conducive to let the adhesive go. Even with heat, still had to cut them off. So, battery cover, it was already painted. It, it came that way. So, I just got a couple spots touched up with body filler. That one was good. That one was good. No big deal with the adhesive. I got one spot, if I show you right there, a little bit of body filler in it. And that's just to kind of take care of a little divot. Uh, these two pieces or these three pieces been pretty good. A little bit of body filler. A lot of body filler on this one. This one had just had a lot of uh, fiberglass defect in it. I wrapped over it because it wasn't a big deal. But with paint, I might as well fix it now. And then my homemade intake cover or the intake boot cover. Uh, it had a lot of body filler previously for the wrap. That's the green. Get it back in focus there. And now I've just got some standard Bondo brand, the pink body filler. So I will go ahead and sand that off or sand that smooth, I should say, to help with the little pitting here and there. And then we will get to preparing for primer. So after all of our sanding, here's what our base pieces are going to be for the primer. Here you have your master cylinder cover, the intake, all those through the filler. Everything is good sanded through 600 grit. I just need to do degreasing. So there's our two inner fenders. Here's going to be our two tanks in the white, and then you have your blue, which is the already painted battery cover that I'm going to paint in the color to match. So everything's there. Now it's just a matter of degrease it, get everything off, get all the fingerprints out of everything, and then we'll start laying some primer. 
So here's a look at our first coat of primer going on. And now I've used the prep kit here. It comes with gloves, it comes with wax degreaser, tape if you need to, any body putty, etc. Everything is prepped there. Now always remember when you're doing primer, we need to make sure we're wearing gloves, we're wearing long clothes, don't get it on your skin. Wear a NIOSH approved respirator because this stuff is the good stuff. Here we go. There's our intake, our piece there. Light cover here. You can still see a little bit of the black through and that's okay. I can do two or three coats there. Same thing, that was the white. Got a little heavy right there that's light around there. Another light coat and another light coat. That gives me the chance to sand it a little bit if I need to between coats. You only need to let it dry for 20 minutes in between coats. So you can make this pretty darn quick uh, with your two or three coats and then you can let it sit overnight to let everything kind of cure out, dry out and before you start on your base color. But otherwise, everything is smooth, happy, doing well. It's 90 degrees, this stuff is drying very, very fast. All right, so I'm working through all of the primer here and I'm having to do a little bit of sanding that maybe others won't. So one of the things I'm dealing with is that it's the low 90s when I'm trying to paint and it's pretty warm, really. They want you to try to keep things around room temperature. You know, you could be in the 70s or so, but 90s means that your primer is going to dry very quickly. So if you notice here, I'm doing some light sanding with a 600 grit paper and I'm mixing in the 320. You can also mix in some 400 as you need. These are the two pieces that come with the prep kit. And I'm just trying to get what I consider just some texture off. So when I'm painting the primer itself, I'm starting to get this texture. And I'll kind of get in here and see if the camera will get it. See all that kind of gritty texture to it? That's just overspray that's drying very, very quickly onto the part. And then it just kind of wipes off with some sandpaper. Comes off real easy. You don't have to scrub. You just have to use the paper, just get it back smooth. So if you find that, if you're painting in warm temperatures, you can just do a little bit of sanding and your parts will kind of shed that texture and get back down to where you can paint. Here's a real good look of one. See all the texture in there, all that grit? You can hear it. All you have to do is sand it off and you're ready to go. All right, so here's gonna be the first look at our paint base color number one. So you have our pieces here. Now I will say it's kind of splotchy and that's all on me, but I feel like it's going to come out just fine. One of the things I'm finding is pieces like this was a little bit thin on the primer. So it's a little bit darker because the base under that was black, but I think it's going to all work out once I get on probably three coats of the base blue. It's all going to work out, but the splotchy is me, just a trigger control. But I think in the end, we'll take it slow, make sure it all works out. But otherwise, the color I feel like is good. And that missing spot is a thumb. So go figure that, huh? Oh, there's another thumb. But this is what the base color is going to look like. It's going to be fantastic when it's done. It's uh, going to be interesting. So I'm going to let this dry overnight because it's about 6 o'clock at night. No need to push it. And then we'll come back tomorrow, do another coat, and get it going. All right, so here's a look at our coat number two. We're definitely laying down the blue. It is covering well, no runs, which for me is almost a miracle. But it's laying down well. I'm very excited with the color of it. It's starting to dry out between coats now. Starting to see a little bit of the texture. That is just me not sanding well enough. And there you go. Sometimes you find out the hard way that you're not uh, exactly where you thought you were. Otherwise, it's beautiful. This stuff is laying down very well. Very excited. It's beautiful out in the sun. You can see definitely see things under these fluorescent lights that you don't see out in the sunlight. But when I put down coat three, I'll show you the end product. It is beautiful. This is a beautiful, beautiful blue. I think they knocked it out of the park and got it perfect to exactly what my sample was of that vinyl wrap that came off. All right, now we're jumping into the end of the base coat. This is our last coat of blue. This is our base coat here. So we've done three coats of primer, three coats of base coat, all the way in. This has no clear coat at this point. So we're just gonna let this blue cure out. Only needs to cure for an hour, but given the time of day, I'll just let it go overnight, try to get back to it later this week. After this, we will go back to our clear coat. We're gonna do three coats of clear. They're 2K 
gloss clear, and then we'll let those fully cure, and then we'll go back on the car. All right, so here's gonna be our first coat of clear. Lovely, lovely gloss clear. Looking great on everything. Just letting it cure. You only have to sit, you know, 20, 30 minutes between coats, but I'm done for the night, so I'll let this cure overnight. Had a couple spots. You can see there, just some spits. No big deal, we'll let that completely dry. Lightly sand the part with like 1500 grit, take that back out, and then re-clear coat it. Easy peasy to fix, no big deal. There's our tank cover and our other tank cover. Loving this blue. All right, so I just laid down the last bit of clear coat. You can look on the edges there how shiny that is. Loving this blue, that clear coat laid down well. That is the third coat, so we're gonna be just letting these dry for 48 hours. But there's gonna be our inner covers, battery cover, coolant tank, and washer tank. Gonna let these dry 48 hours. I'll put them back in the car and then we'll wrap this video up with reviewing them versus the swatch sample of the vinyl is what the color blue is supposed to match. And we'll see how it came out. Okay, so I got the car out in the sunshine. You can see now the blue on the paint of the covers is supposed to match the blue flames on the car. Now I gave ERA Paints these vinyl that's on the two coil covers as the base to what to try to match because I couldn't give them the flames. Just didn't translate well over pictures. I gotta tell you, the paint I think is a little lighter than the vinyl, but it actually matches the car better than the vinyl ever did. And here's a look at the other side. So, I'll tell you what, that is fantastic. Now this paint is gonna be heat resistant enough that I will never have to take these covers back off. I don't have to go to the car show and pop everything on, pop everything off because the vinyl can't do it. This paint is exactly what's needed. The 2K clear coat will not yellow, and it's good to go. So well done, ERA Paint. Your products are fantastic. You guys need any paints or something to touch up or a custom, I've got some links down in the description there. You can jump on over, find them on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok also. And that's it for this time. Next will be some other pieces, and I'm going to make these coil covers again so the blue ones will be gone. And I will probably leave them as exposed carbon for something a little different. We'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.